Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com and guess what? We've got a box from DG, DJI Technologies uh, Limited Liability Corporation. Interestingly, this shipped from the United States, so that's kind of uh, interesting. So, um, what could it be? Maybe it could be the Spark? I'll tell you what. Let's get into it. But before we do that, I want to I want to share something a little bit with you guys about the box size. I was rather interested. And again, I know there's a thousand box vi unboxing videos, but hey, it's cool if you're thinking about it, right? So this box is uh, is about ten and a half inches by nine inches by uh, eight inches tall. So the the box itself is rather small. Uh, and, and one of the reasons I say that, if I was just getting the drone. And I hope that's all that's not in here, or I hope that's not all that's in here, if I spit that out correctly, is uh, I bought the Fly More package. So I should get the drone, the bag, the chargers, two batteries, the remote controller, all that. Now, this is something interesting. Void if damaged. Well, what does that mean? I'm not sure, but uh, hopefully it's not damaged because this is kind of really loose piece of tape there and everything. Um... But outside of that, it seems to be sealed up. Now, I understand from the other unboxing videos, which I've watched, is these come double boxed. So, let's, um, let's see here. Oh, woo, wow. So, this will, it is double boxed. There's quite a bit of space in here. So, let's go ahead. So, so the interesting piece is we have a memory card here, 16 gig memory card. So, that's fairly reasonable for a 1080p camera. Um, and we have the Spark Fly More Combo, so that's the right piece. So let's see how big this box is. So this is about mm, a little short of nine and three quarters by about seven and three quarters by mm, about seven inches tall. So that's this is about what you could expect from this. So. Uh, Let's go ahead. It's nicely shrink wrapped. It doesn't. The uh, in, interior box does not seem to be damaged at all. Um, one of the things that I always do, especially with the DJI products, to save the box is because uh, if I sell it later on eBay, it makes it cleaner, nicer, and gets a little more money. There's also a sort of a warranty tab there, which I've now cut, so I guess I own it. Um, it came rather quick. So, uh, purchased it from Amazon. I always like, even if it takes me a little bit longer, I like to purchase from Amazon. Um, the return policies are a lot smoother. I've had problems in the past, and they've taken care of it. Uh, versus if I buy direct. And so I'm always happy about using Amazon. I uh, also have links below and some cards up in the corner for this. So, now here's the atypical box. And here is the case, the extra case, which is a lot smaller than I had thought. We'll take a little bit closer look at that, but let's uh, take these components out. And let's take a look at them. Now, I watched Drone Valley the other day, and I kind of know that this is going to be full of a wad of books. Now, a little bit unlike Drone Valley, I'm a little bit disappointed that they killed so many trees. Um... Because I'm never going to read all these. Um, so that's kind of crazy. But I think a lot of this uh, is more, I'm, I'm betting you, for liability insurance purposes than it is for actual usability. Uh, because I think one of the problems with uh, saying, hey, you know, here's a PDF, go online, get it or something. Um, I think from a legal standpoint, it might be create a few more issues. And since this is really more so geared for... Um, Joe Novice Drone Guy. I think that's the reason they threw those books in there, but just my humble opinion. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this. Pry, pry this open, and yes, we have the beautiful yellow version. Now, it's a little bit more of a muted yellow version than I had anticipated. I was expecting this to be bright yellow. Um, and actually, actually, interestingly enough, if I look at the screen of the camera, it does appear to be a brighter yellow. But I would call this more of a mustard yellow than um, uh, honey yellow, or sorry, um, bright yellow. So it's definitely doesn't look, this This does not look the same color as you're seeing it on the screen, I can guarantee you. So it appears we have another battery. 
so that's good. Wow, the batteries are actually lighter than I had thought. So let's go ahead, let's move this case out of the way. Let's put this guy in, and again, this is really, really nice. Um, the uh, camera has a protective cover, but let's... Um, oh, everybody's weighed these 8,000 times, but I just want to make sure. So let's get that and zeroes it out. It's on grams. We set that bad boy. And it's uh, actually a little lighter. Okay, but I don't have the prop guards on. That's why it's a little bit lighter. So I'm at uh, basically 227, 228 grams without the prop guards. DGI says with prop guards this should be around 300. I tell you guys, this is one really light, interesting little quadcopter. Um, I'm excited about this. You know, because one of the big things, you've heard me talk about it on this channel before. Uh, when I take the Phantom 3 out, people look at me like I've got a third eye in that, you know, all kinds of weird stuff. And, and, and you know, because of the, the all the ideas behind drones. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys. Um, you know, but when I take out my little Hubson, you know, people look at it, oh, hey, here's this 50-some-year-old guy playing with a kid's toy, and they just go about their business. They don't even pay a second attention to it. And this is what I'm really hoping with this guy, because he's about on par with the Hubson. And I'll do some comparisons in a minute. Um, but I want to be able to fly this place. And I'm talking about legal places where I should be able to fly the drone. I'm not talking about doing anything mischievous. But I just don't want that look or the attention. I live in a border community. We have a lot of border agents. I know these guys are just doing their jobs. Um, I get the bad eye a lot of times when I'm out flying. Uh, we also have a coastal community, so we have the Coast Guard. I get the bad eye again. And, and again, not that these guys, I mean, they have tough jobs. And I'm not trying to pick on them. Um, and bad guys use these a lot. And, and so, again, especially, you know, the bigger ones because of obviously the payload capabilities of something like a Phantom 2, 3, or 4, etc., that configuration. This guy, um, you know, again, when I go out flying my Hubson, they don't even pay attention. I pull the Phantom 3 of the up air out, I'm being watched. So, again, excited for this guy. And nice little weight there. So let's put this guy aside, and I rambled enough about that. Let's go take a look at maybe some of the other pieces that I have in this case. Let me move this out of the way. Um, I also, this uh, this case over here is pretty nice too. But I, I'm really, wow. Uh, let me move this guy over here. Let me give you some measurements on this. So this is smaller than I anticipated. So this is about 9.5 by about 7.5 by about mm, four and a half tall. So this is a, this is a nice size. And one of the, the pieces that, uh, I, you know, one of the reasons I got this, let's back up a second, is I want, I want this to be my travel drone. And so I want to be able to take it with me on vacation, on an airplane, um, you know, and I want something unobtrusive to be able to take on there. Now I could, now with this size, I could actually technically fit this in my expandable briefcase and you know, I've got a Tumi bag with an expandable back pocket and so it unzips and, it, and I could probably pretty much fit this in that back pocket and take it out inside my briefcase. So this is what I think is really really cool about this. And uh, so opening it up so I've got da -da, the remote controller the holy grail of controllers, yes. Um, for Pete's sake, this is heavier than this is heavier than the quadcopter. That's interesting. So all kinds of buttons. I'll go over some of that in, in future videos. Really good feel to the sticks. Not surprising. And again, I've got my got my charger in here now. Interesting thing is. This has a couple USB ports on here, so this has got some sort of plug there and USB ports. So, got my prop guards, more prop guards. Uh, it has um, stuck in here the cord for this, and that's the cord. Uh, but, you know, one thing I don't see, am I missing something here? No, 
that box is empty. Um, I thought I was supposed to have some sort of charging unit that all this plugs into. Now this feels heavy. So maybe something's still stuck in here. Appears to be. Ah, whew, I was really nervous. Really nervous, guys. Um, so that, just note that this charging unit was stuck in the front here. Very, very thin. Thinner than I, thinner than I anticipated, if you can see that. And again, um, this, this, this charging end, which is really odd, plugs in there. And then obviously these batteries plug in here. And it's interesting, it's got four contacts on the bottom, so I'm assuming they're going to have some sort of charging base. You can see this here, that maybe it just rests in, and when you want to grab it, you know, it sits on your desk, charges, you grab it and go, without having to do that. Also, you can see the infrared sensors and the down-looking camera here, which I think is one of the cool pieces. These motors are just the coolest, so... This is this is all the parts. This is really what you get when you buy the Flymore package. And again, um, quite frankly, this is my most expensive quad, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I've had a couple of the up airs. I've got the Phantom 3. Um, I've got a couple of ins And, um, you know, again, with this sitting here at roughly 500 bucks that this is the most expensive and it's also the smallest one of the group but i'm really excited for the the usability uh, of it and again very much like the mavic controllers um this opens up very wide so you could put a small tablet or phablet in here which is what i plan on doing uh, also for those interested it's got rubber teeth i don't know if you can kind of see those in here um the kind of where it's tapered so you can grip onto it. Uh, here's the uh, antennas. And again, um, kind of interesting. I think they're just reversed like this so they fold into one another more so than anything electronic. So you can see they fold in like that and then pop up like this, like rabbit ears. Um, apparently I've turned it on, so that's interesting. Oh, yeah, because I pressed the power button. Here's the control buttons for the video, and I can't remember what that is from watching all the uh, pre-videos. Uh, the function button, and I think that's the record button, and uh, sport mode button. I, I was really impressed with the sport mode operations I've seen with this. But again, very compact little guy. Loved the case. Um, I don't think if you put two batteries, the props and everything in there, you'll be able to put the... Um, the charger in it. So the charger, you know, again, I think what would have to go in another piece of your luggage um, if you carry this around. Not a really big deal, but all in all, very compact unit. Uh, I'm definitely going to order another battery. Um, I didn't see an option really to do it when I ordered the kit, but I think having three batteries would be a good combo. One in the unit, one, um, you know, two extra, because you can see you have two pockets here. So you could put the copter in here with uh, one battery. You know, the one thing I didn't see, maybe I didn't see another set of props. Um, that's something I'm going to have to look for. Oh, they're probably over here. But you, you, in other words, you can set this in there with two batteries, the remote controller. Um, you could actually put a small, probably, tablet in here or a phablet type phone. Um, I think it'd be tight to get your prop guards in, though, because you put prop guards in here with nothing else. So it just depends on how you do it, or if you're going to use your phone. Yep, these are the extra props. Whew. So to get extra props, but it only looks like I've got two extra props, unless there's two per box. Let's uh, take this out and see, and yes, there is. So I do have one total extra set. Uh, that's something else I'm going to order um, a couple extra. You can never have enough props. Uh, but again, you know, sort of uh, similar to the Mavic. They fold up. Very light. Um... I think these would be, oof, my opinion, probably fairly easy to break upon impact. So I would suggest having a few of these handy to to keep flying. Um, but again, I mean, this is a rather tiny bird. So uh, anyways, let's go ahead and open this up and see what these look like. 
Um, because I, especially for some of the first flights, I do plan on using prop guards. I think sort of it's a mixed bag of whether you should or shouldn't use the prop guards. Um, they're fairly heavy. Um, they, they aren't light. And I'm just trying to figure out how they open up because they're kind of strange. So if you see here how they open up, this piece hinges. So my understanding is this piece um, is intended to go over the bottom, not like I know how I'm doing this. Oh yeah, slides on and then just uh, snaps in place. Now, uh, that didn't quite just snap in place. There, that snaps in place. Uh, won't fit in the bag with the prop guard, so just so you know. Uh, no bag with prop guards, and that's how it looks with one of the prop guards on. Um, let's do a little bit of measuring. So without the prop guards, it's about six wide and about uh, six long, roughly six by six. A diagonal measurement, not to the extension of the props, is about eight inches. Uh, the body is about five and a quarter inches by about two inches wide. Again, crazy small. Let's do a little bit of comparison with the um, Hubzen 502 for a second. Okay, so here is the Hubzen 502E, and here is the Spark. The 502E is actually a bit bigger than the Spark, so if I take it and put it this way, uh, as you can see, the body is a little bit longer. It's a little bit narrower. Um, the wheelbase between props is definitely smaller. So one compact unit, obviously this is a whole lot lighter than this. They packed a wad of stuff in this guy, i got to tell you. Um, it is definitely pretty firm feeling, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to go fly this guy and get it all set up. Um, so anyways... So I'm going to go charge some batteries. I'm going to try to get some flight time in maybe later today. Again, this just showed up at the door. Wanted to share this with you guys. Um, one of the big things, this yellow does not look like the yellow you're seeing. And not that it's a huge uh, problem. I would have liked the brighter yellow. This is very much a muted, uh, almost uh, honey Dijon musterish colored in person. So um, anyways, not sure why the difference. Anyways, hey, subscribe button's going to be coming up over there. Hit me up in comments below if you have questions. And uh, hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.